Hi, welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigand. I'm Lisa Jackson. And we are glad you're joining us. We hope you will call in with some conversation or questions or comments. And we are very lucky to have with us Mural Kramer, who is chair of the planning board, but also just an, a citizen of life of the world. Yeah. Because our first topic is going to be talking about the immigration issue and the border and children being separated from families. I know there was a change today, but um, I would love to hear some of your thoughts and we have some background to fall back on. Perfect, thank yeah, you. Yeah, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Yeah. So, yeah. so where do, um, I did some research today and I found out, you know, like there was a lot of propaganda. The administration says it's an old Democrat law that they put into place, but it really, from what I found out, it wasn't it, in Jeff Sessions and what date? Um, March. Dis March decided to enact it and, and use the 100 percent. And it sounds like what they changed today, if I'm correct, is mm -hmm. that Trump really didn't sign that to save the, to let the immigration stat or se not separate the children because he allowed Congress to make new law. To so buying, change buying time today. Yes. So I'm not I'm not overly up on what happened today. I yeah, did hear I was about trying it a little to, bit yeah. on my way home. Yeah. Um, so the way I understand it, and none of us understand it completely, I'm sure. Right. Um, the way I understand it is that it is really an enforcement policy and an mm -hmm. enforcement action that has changed, mm -hmm. and that does rest entirely with this administration. Whether you like it or you don't like it, they get the credit for it. Mm -hmm. um, and it is um, from a bottom line. You know, I'm a I'm a parent first. I'm a, right. a woman of faith. We're all mothers. I'm yes. a, I'm a right. social worker. And we're all, even if we're not parents, right. we have parents. Right. We, yes. have, we have to be able right. to understand it um, from a personal human standpoint. And, uh, and taking children from their parents in this way yeah. is damaging and wrong and monstrous, really. It really sure. is. Sure, and this is the kind of thing that can lead to post-traumatic stress. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If nothing else, changes in the brain and the hippocampus and the, you know, all of the things that happen when a child is in that terror and fight or flight and, you know, mom is being taken away yeah. generates all kinds of terrible um, well, and these chemicals are, and hormones to be released. These are people that are seeking asylum too. Right. They're not right. leaving yep. because exactly. they're, you know, they're like us. They're looking like, for protection. Yeah, they're looking for protection. Yeah. So they're already under an incredible amount of stress. And it was interesting. I was thinking about my role in disaster response, how we take care of people and, and our policy and how we have a disaster shelter. Even if it was, we take care of immigrants, we take care right. of everybody right. within the country. Right. We don't do that. I mean, even if they're not documented, we would take care of them the same. So I right. think it's very bizarre that, you know, that they can do that at the border. So like it, it just, and, and it seems like it would create too much work for them because well, there's, there's, you I know. I think that you bring up two really important points and I'm sure in your disaster response, yeah. you prioritize bringing Treat. families together. We and do family unification re centers. Right. I'm like, that would be Reunifying a perfect... people. It's, it, it's known to all of us that yeah. it is traumatic and damaging yeah. to be separated from um, everybody that we love and care about or the people um, that form our community, whether it's direct family or not. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the other thing is that, um, that it... Uh, I lost my train of thought right okay. there. You said something. But, but the sorry. thing is, is the disaster response, I mean, like, we're trained to do that, and that's a big piece of, and I'm thinking, like, well, the, the administration doesn't know what to do. How do we reunify? I'm, like, looking oh. at the MRC, that would be a perfect opportunity for us volunteers. Well, it's not a disaster or, response. Yeah, What's happening can is be used. people are coming, uh, can, you know, what is it, 2,300 children just this month or yeah, something? and they 2,000. Right, said, yeah. and they come through... Uh, some with families, some individually. I know there was a story of a whole family of five mm. that were allowed to stay together in detention because they were together as a family. And then this is just on the news last night, seven young men came through. Yeah. And this is in McAllen, Texas. Apparently, there's a very narrow crossing mm -hmm. and there are inner tubes set up on one side with plastic bags they get in the inner tube they push their way across and this is from someone who lives in McAllen that saw this happening they get yeah. on the other side they take off the wet clothes and get the plastic bag with the fresh clothes and just filter into the mm -hmm. into the countryside so there's a um, what I saw was these seven young men came over and they just went into what looked like cornfields and mm -hmm. I guess there are cornfields or sugarcane so the law enforcement people, Border Patrol, got three of them yeah. 
but the other four are just gone. Right, so I think that it's a legitimate uh, right. question to explore um, and pursue the right. the ways people approach the border, the way we receive them at the border, right. mm -hmm. um, our definitions of legal and illegal. We have right. a tendency um, to, uh, to label individuals who come in through various means um, illegally. I, I also think that we need to really contemplate with with our hearts and minds what it must take for people to embark on a on a journey like that, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. with their very young children. We've seen, right. you know, children at the border as young as four months old in the mm -hmm. news that were taken away from their mother. In that case, right from a nursing mother's breast, right. it's just right. it's just beyond disgusting, right? This is a this is a tiny baby. I mean, they're all they're all children. They're they're all tiny. They're all um, struggling, um, and and. Uh, we need, we need a response that we can be proud of and is humane right. and responsible. Well, and even from, like, if I'm going to play put on maybe the Republican mantra on this, but it creates a, an incredible amount of work when you split up the families. All of a sudden you have this child that you have to get formula that someone has to feed and and take care of. So, you know, like, it, it that's what we look like in it disasters. We look at family units coming together because then they take care of each other. Right. You right. know what I mean? And right. it, it just, that whole situation right. creates such a, a, an amount of work that doesn't need to happen. I actually think, and I hadn't thought of, about this before because yeah. it's been widely publicized that there's no policy, there's no framework for bringing these families back together. Yeah. I actually think the disaster response yeah. model could be employed very Absolutely. successfully. We need to, this is a disaster. Right. Um, mm. We recognize it, at least many of us recognize it as a disaster in yeah. policy and, and in practice. And we do need to, you know, we have, President Trump has. I understand has caused a pause in the action, which had to happen, and we can all appreciate that it did happen. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't sound like it's a permanent pause, but I don't know too much about it. I heard a little bit about it on the yeah. way home. I it's haven't researched big. it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, but sorry. but I yeah. think that um, the next first thing we have to do is bring those families back together. Absolutely. That's yeah. the you know that's the next first thing, and mm -hmm. um, Congress can work its magic, and you know it would be great. We w we could all sort of mm -hmm. come around to the idea that it would be great if they would take some constructive action right. um, and help solve this bigger problem um, in a humane and responsible and constructive way. Right, and it's uh, just it, I'm ashamed. You know, as a, I'm as ashamed a and, and yeah. terrified for yeah. the, those children. Margie, you made the point early about. The trauma response, and right. I'm also a social worker by training, and I, and I, you know, it's we don't know how yeah, acts scarred. like this um, hurt children. Children are uniquely vulnerable in yep. that equation, mm -hmm. and they are already. We know we can guess, we can surmise, and and make an educated guess. They are already traumatized by whatever happened at home that yeah. caused them to Honduras. flee yeah. for their 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 flight, right? Across, you know, through dangerous territory in a Absolutely. dangerous way. Um, and then to be taken from their parents, it's, you know, that kind of compounding of the trauma is right. also very dangerous. So they interviewed um, Dr. Kraft, who's the head of the American Academy of Pediatrics mm -hmm. on NBC, whatever, Morning News, and she is talking about it as child abuse. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because yes. of all of those things. Yes, yeah. um, You know, and, and what would the harm be if you were to put the child and the parent or the family together in a cage or a holding area. So I think that's an important thing to explore yeah. too, because yeah. putting people, we have become very comfortable in this country putting um, black and brown people in particular, poor black and brown people in particular in cages. Mm -hmm. And we need to explore that more fully. And, and I think those families need to be reunified. I'm not sure I'm willing to make the leap that that it is necessarily okay that we then put them in cages, but they need I, to be together. No matter what we do, yeah. we need to put them together. Well, they did, uh, right, and that was a very, that was a horrible image to look at, and the comment also was that the, sh the picture they showed on the news where there were all of these people who had come over the border, the children, supposedly from four and up, but then they, then they said, no, it's actually, now they have a tender, what is it, tender age, um, facility. facility. Yeah, tender age shelter called Casa El Presidente, if you don't mind, in uh, Brownsville, Texas. Anyway, um, yep, steam's coming out of our ears. So, so they also have a tent city for more teenage people. But all I can think when you you have how many hundreds of kids of 16, 17 year olds in tents. 
How is that? That's not... So we're still talking oh. about children. We're still talking right. about developing brains. We're still exactly. talking about people, young people yeah. who are being traumatized. And, and honestly, we don't have any way to say or predict whether, you know, the, the most tender age children will will do better or worse. We don't know. And we don't know that those young teens that, that may have, you know, they got more life experience and more resiliency, maybe. Mm -hmm. We don't know that they're going to do better. Mm -hmm. They are certainly, you know, in an environment that we would not choose for our own children under exactly. any circumstance. Right. Right. Um, and I think that we need, you know, we need to be responsible. I mean, that's what, you know. I agree. We if, have to be able to look at ourselves in the mirror. If we're taking them into custody, yeah. we have a responsibility yeah. to treat them in a certain way. Right. Yeah. I mean, that if that, whatever that custody looks like, if there is, and, and there's models, the disaster response yeah. model. Yep. It, it's It's not this is not hard to figure out and I mean just no. the amount of resources no. and they're this using was, it feels like it's a political this was tool. An, an intentional if my perspective I'm yeah. only speaking for myself yeah it's an intentional effort to to frighten people away from our borders mm -hmm. and as horrible as that is, it's clearly not effective. These people have been on the run. They're still going to come because they're weeks leaving. And months. Mm -hmm. They don't speak our language. They're not keeping up with the no. news. It's not like they have Facebook. And they're and leaving they trauma. They're yeah. trying to get away from a situation. They have situation. no idea what's going to happen to right. them when but, they get here. And here's the thing is, our Statue of Liberty says, give us your poor, your tired, your mm -hmm. whatever it is, huddled masses, and we, and we will make a new life for them. So the promise of America that uh, that America holds that out is come yeah. here and we will be a, a place for you to thrive. I think it's important to point out that we don't have a stellar uh, history on that. Right. Anyway. Right. So we have we have always persecuted and right. separated right. and and traumatized right. immigrating right. nationalities and, and right. countries. We have unfortunately always done that um, and there's a there's a greater conversation to be had there yes um, and you know I would be a proponent of you know looking at those immigration laws and making sure that those laws really exemplify for me the Statue of Liberty the promise the promise that my the family ideal. had when when they came over well, my course. family too of course family everyone came from Sweden and the everyone and should that's what yeah. that's what America holds yeah. out so America should stand by its but in, yeah, but in in the meantime, no matter what the laws are, we right. are charged with being responsible, humane, humane. and dignified in Absolutely. our response to the poor right. and the suffering, and you know the 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 frightened and the traumatized and especially and the children. It's not their fault. It's it's not the children's fault. It's some people would argue that it's the parents' fault, and I. Well, I don't know. I, no, as a parent, fleeing. as a parent, I, I can't imagine right. fleeing right. a place of home. safety exactly. to run to right. a place of danger right. with my children in tow. Right. That just right. doesn't make any sense. Right. And we're all the same under and the skin. It's interesting because I do think, uh, on the other side, I think that the border patrol and whoever the policy is, and Kirsten Nielsen, believe that they are doing a right thing because they're providing foil blankets. They're, you know, the, the foil thing. They're, they're providing some kind of food. They're providing shelter. They think they, they, they say, can defend themselves. They say as that they, are, they think they're doing the right thing. They are yeah. educated, capable people, right. resource mm -hmm. people. They were raised differently. They were raised by parents who would never have stood by and watched that happen. They, right. She's not a parent, but he's a parent. He would not stand by while his family was treated thusly that right. way. Right. They, they say, right. but what they do right. is what we have to focus exactly. on. And what they do, right now, they are criminally abusing families and children. And those two people should lose their jobs over this because they have At shown least. an abject yeah. lack of judgment well, and compassion right. and humanity. My fear is, and this is a whole different subject, but watching the people who are the mouthpieces of this administration's policy, yeah. I don't in my heart think that they believe what they're saying, but this is what they have to say because it's their job. That's me being an optimist and an idealist. I don't know. It's just, I mean, I work I can't under health they and human actually services, think that's right. and this, I'm watching this person speak, and I can't even identify with what yeah. is happening there. I mean, it's that's great. that's where my yep. Yep. my organization works under, and I'm looking at this, and it's, I'm like, it's and they're treating opposed. children like criminals. I mean, really, the in a way, well, no, they're treating them like 
like shelter dogs. By the and way, they probably they can. wouldn't they would be able to get away with, with treating <laughs> dogs this way. This is what I'm saying. They would keep it's puppies even, with their mom. Right. <laughs> so, That's right. Yeah. Especially <laughs> nursing. Yeah. So Laura Bush, all of the presidential of the wives yeah. have said, I can't believe this is happening, including Melania Trump, yeah. who said, you know, you have to make policies, but should govern with heart. Yeah. Um, Laura Bush said our government should not be in the business of warehousing children in converted box stores or making plans to place them in ten cities in the desert outside of El Paso. These images are eerily reminiscent of Japanese yep. American internment camps of World War II, now considered to have been one of the most shameful episodes in U.S. history. Anthony Scaramucci, short-lived <laughs> White House communications director, who no surprise was fired because he's didn't always agree, also criticized the policy, saying it's not the Christian way or the American way, though he hoped the president would end the policy. Um, the president can reverse it, but he's not, or he hadn't, or I'm not sure what he came up with. Kirsten okay. Nielsen slammed the media on Sunday, tweeting, we do not have a policy of separating families at the border, period, which is not true, because that's what's happening. She said, this misreporting by members Press and advocacy groups must stop. It is irresponsible and unproductive, as I've said many times before. If you are seeking asylum for your family, there is no reason to break the law and illegally cross between ports of entry. That is the point of the other side. Mm -hmm. Come in legally, mm -hmm. and we won't separate you. I'm, and I'm, I'm not actually entirely sure that that happened. Right. That's not clear to me. Yeah. Right. But... I haven't done extensive research yeah. on that. Well, they looked. I looked at it a little bit because I was curious about that comment. Yeah. And they say, well, they should go to. There U are pens ports of entry. Yeah. Well, United Nations too. So, like within their country, they're supposed to go. And I mean, how something, are they? Yeah. I mean, like that. something that's hard for people to understand. Yeah. It's hard for me to understand. Is that they do not have systems of government that they can go to that protect them. Right. Um, yeah. And or they don't they have, we, we see things yeah. through our own lens. Mm -hmm. And if we had a, a cataclysmic problem in our life, we have resources and, mm -hmm. and, and safety built in, yeah. into the structure, right? We can yeah. go to the local police you department. You can call 911. And we are you don't even safe. have to go anywhere. They are not safe nope, calling the local safe. police right. department. Right. And we can go to our government, presumably, uh, through, you know, through channels and ranks. Right. And we are safe in that process. Right. I don't think that, that we can possibly understand that, that what it means to not be safe in any direction that right. you turn, to have nowhere to look for help when you're facing and matters of life and death. And how do you find that information even if it's there? So they're saying, well, they should go through these channels yeah. in these countries and do this, but how do these people even... Well, and they're not coming you know from Mexico. They're how coming from Honduras. How many people have Honduras? gone to get a new, a new ID at the Passport, registry in Massachusetts, right? There's yeah. a new system. And we speak the I, language. I think my husband spent like seven hours getting his. He's an educated, capable, <laughs> right. resourced man right. Who, right. who, by the way, looked it up and took the appropriate documentation with him. Yeah. Yes. yes. He yes. ended up getting it, but it was... Right. It, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's hard for any of us, even when right. we are part of the system. Right. Never mind coming into the system right. without any knowledge about it. No, and so all I can think is, if Honduras, which is part of Central America, right? Yep. So the people from Honduras, all they can think is America is freedom, and they'll take care of us because it's right. everyone can go there. So they're getting, they're going through as a family with the babies through Mexico, which is not their country. Right. So they can't find help in Honduras, which is full of the MS-13 yeah. gang or whatever's happening there and the drug thing. They go through Mexico. They don't know where they're going. All they know is if I get to this place, yeah. I can find help from my family. Yeah. I can be safe. And then what happens is they said 4,000 kids are in that tenth city, right. 16, yeah. 17 year olds. No, it's deplorable. And, yeah. and my hope is that with this pause in the policy, there will be immediate action to reunify the parents and the children who were affected in these last yeah. six weeks, seven weeks, right? Um, and that we all take a collective breath mm -hmm. and come up with whatever policy it is that we need to come up with that respects the and use laws the and the right. rights. Yeah. Human and, rights. But never, use. never, never victimize yeah. children or yeah. use children as the weapons. Right. Actually, in well, in and the it just that's what it feels like. And I, I know we're at the end of this segment, but it. It really feels like it's on almost, you know, they're blaming liberals because we're using it as a tool, or you know what I mean, or they're blaming, you know, Republicans. I this is this is families, right? And 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 again, this feels like they're this administration is pushing forward an anti-immigration 
and this is what they ran on, and it, it's they're enforcing it in a way to meet their base. Well, you know, there, there's another just, thought on that. Yeah. Um, before I talk about that, yeah. Pat and Stephen Craig like our Facebook video. Thanks, guys. Feel Thank free to you. call in yeah, and give us comments. In. Um, and so the thing, the, the comment has also been made that this could be a smokescreen to deflect from the Mueller, the Mueller investigation. Because this is an MO yeah. of the administration. It's created a big fuss over here yeah. so All you don't see things. what's actually happening right. here. All kinds of things. Um, but you know what? When something so monstrous and so wrong yeah. happens right. and, and children are being victimized, I am so gratified that the right. United States of America has risen up. Yeah. In yeah. protest. Yeah. Yeah. So Craig says, why is the outrage just coming out now? Thank you, Craig. Thank this you. Um, practice has been going on since the Clinton era, era, and Trump did sign something today. I think Craig is referring to, and I really appreciate the comment, Craig, referring to the Flores case yeah. under Janet Reno, yeah. where there was a child that was brought over illegal or through illegal channels somehow, and they got the child back. Yeah with the, you know back to their country and at that point they put the the law into place and sessions now is has created a policy which so is right. different without a doubt without thing. a doubt but policies over time authority. have been flawed right yeah. without a doubt right. Right? right so we can we can stay right out of the i feel like we can stay right out of the political right harangue right, right? And just look at the everybody has some humanity, ownership in this but we need to stop yeah. Yeah. stop this yeah. this yeah. zero tolerance right. taking every baby every child from right. every mother and well, every father it has to said. stop right and so the outrage mean, now is because it has reached a crisis point i think and, and that the policy shift has happened, which was not the case since that Janet Reno Flores case. Right. That was existing, and things were going along at a certain pace, and now all of a sudden it's this huge thing. Zero and tolerance. Right. With, without Zero due tolerance. Right. Without due process. That's why the outrage No now. due process. They're right. treating them as criminals. That's the problem. No due process. They're, just ta they're, they're immediately incarcerated and Child separated abuse. from their children and thrown into uh, detention facilities, right. whatever right. you call them. It's just wrong on every level. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's too bad. It, it really is, and it absolutely shouldn't happen. And, and what's happening with this administration, I was just rereading what I looked at, it is up to the Attorney General to decide out to implement those laws. Not for nothing. The yeah. Attorney General ought to know that there should be separation of church and state. Absolutely. Yeah. One final point. Yeah. Right. Oh, and yeah. well, besides <laughs> that, what he referenced in the Bible wasn't even no, relevant. No, yeah. so no. That's what? a whole other thing. There's, there's nothing in the Bible that justifies Which, this. Never. Right. Nothing. So anyway, yeah. on that note, yes. <laughs> for that cheerful conversation, um, we're going to come back and talk about the center school transition to marathon school and what do you love about marathon school if you went to the um, opening and then we're going to finish by talking about the hopkinton carnival what's your favorite ride and uh we'll be back and we thank muriel kramer so thanks much for, for joining me. us i appreciate so it much. thanks yeah. for uh, raising this this elevating this issue yes this way. yes yeah, yes thank you and we'll hope yeah. for the best for everybody yeah. see you soon we'll thank fight you. for the best yes. let's go yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're back, and we are back. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us. This topic now is going to be talking about the Marathon School 
Um, we just finished a conversation with Muriel Kramer, we appreciate it, about the detention centers on the immigration uh, issue, Mexican border. Mm -hmm. um, and now we're going to talk about the Marathon School. Yep. Uh, Marathon School had their grand opening, I think it was last weekend. Last week, yeah. Ribbon cutting, and um, mm -hmm. a lot of people are really impressed there. with it. Yeah. Um, I know we've all had a chance to watch it develop over time, yeah. and, and there was a wetlands issue, and yeah. then they added two more classrooms. Was it $2 million? I can't remember. Yeah. Some huge amount yeah, that yeah. they spent to add two more classrooms because, of course, um, as Kathy McLeod said, we had 92 um, new children Six, sign up seven, since eight, September eight, that we didn't ten, realize. Seven, yeah. So it's it's a definitely much needed facility given that Center School was had some serious yeah. repair issues. Yeah, so. and it was yeah, I was reading about it was interesting. There was an article about Center School and how the kids were talking about it and they did a ceremony and they had like old graduates or old Hopkinton nice. folks that went in and, and looked at you know, talked about how it was going to center school. And I guess they had like six renovations over time. It. Well, I, I know when I was listening to the um, center school reuse committee meeting the other night, yep. um, they talked about the front of the building, I think it was 1928, I'm not sure. Yep. Then the middle section was in the 50s. Yep. And then the back section was 80s, maybe yep. 78. So when they talked about the reuse of that building, yep. they referred to the middle section, the 50s section, yep. as having some hazmat situations, hazardous ah. materials. They didn't say what they would be, right. but they're gonna knock that down. Oh, no kidding. Right, so ah. I'm thinking, you know, all of these children went through these buildings for, I mean, my kids, your, your yeah, daughter. Yeah, so they went through, so yeah. went through there, and I don't know where those hazardous materials are, yeah. but I'm really glad that they're not going to school there right. in a building that's way too hot on the top floor because right. of the heat situation. And it was and, cold. I remember seeing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an old giraffe building. Right. So the new building is just gorgeous. It, it, is. it looks kind of like, to me, when I look at it from the street, yeah. when I'm trying to look at the road, and I do peek. Um, I do too. <laughs> yeah. It looks kind of like... Um, a Dell AMC building. Yeah. You know, it looks like an office park. They actually did it for a fairly, I mean, as school costs go, it was $45.5 million, which I think it was the cost. I don't remember. That's good. Yeah, so that was cheap compared to, like, the high school and things like that. I know it's smaller, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have the gym that we have there, but it, it really... It seems like they were pretty fiscally responsible in building it as well, which yeah. makes all of us happy. That's wonderful. And, and that I, was before they added the two. Right. Um, and it's modular. interesting. I was looking at the blueprint of it, and I, I, I happened to go to schools all over the state and look at develop emergency dispensing site and sheltering plans, and the layout of it's very, very well done. Mm -hmm. The way they have the bus route coming in, mm -hmm. the way the parking is. They have the parking on the side so it doesn't interfere with the bus routes. And the drop-off really works very well. And all the playgrounds are behind the school, very protected by the school. So it's it's really kind of done. The layout of it's done quite well. Mm -hmm. And then the way that the gym and the cafe or cafeteria is in the front, and then preschool's right to the left, and the older kids go to the back. I thought that was kind of an interesting and very thoughtful way that they designed the school just because the way they would control the flow right of the kids during the day so I right. thought that was kind of cool yep so 47 million and oh, it's 47 million uh, that's yeah. what I'm looking at good 47 good. million um, completed there. two months ahead of schedule um, Jeff D'Amico is a senior project manager with compass project management yeah who are the builders Excellent. Um, yeah and so I think I think really it's going to be an amazing right. resource. Two-story, 97,000 square foot building, 25 classrooms, media center, music room, cafeteria, gym, you just said all that, yeah. I think. Um, but it started in October 2016. Right. So it's going to be done two months ahead of schedule, which is wonderful because it opened now. Because they're going to be starting at school. And, yeah. So yeah. it's good because it gives it time over the summer for teachers to move in, set up classrooms. Right. And work you know, out the bugs. I was just going to say that. You <laughs> never know. See if there's anything and that's And apparently it's about missing. 475 students coming in. Preschool, K-1, yep. will be in there. Um, and what I love in this, the Hopkinton Crier article uh, written by... Uh, somebody that I don't remember, Cesario Contreras, a new reporter. Excellent. Um, what I loved was they said, in a nod to, and I'm quoting now, in a nod to Hopkinton being the starting point of the Boston Marathon, the school's entry 
features a blue and yellow. Ooh, that like the Boston uh, Marathon. Start line along with the phrase, it all starts here. Don't you love I that? I love that. For, for, I love that. For a preschool K1, right. it all starts here. I love that. Right. And then and um, kids just love the marathon. And on too. the floor, right? Yeah. So just, you know. Right, right. And then um, That's really, very clever. another really yeah. cool thing they did referencing the waters of the Charles River, which also starts in Hopkinton, there's a beautiful illustration of a person canoeing, which spans the length of the lobby. Aww. So they've done some beautiful planning of the building and the space, right. but they've also Incorporated. brought some meaning into it to yeah. connect it to the community in those ways, you know, especially really cool. for little kids, yeah. you know, to give them some identity right, um, right from the beginning. Right. You know, to just be aware that they live in a very special place. Yeah, it, that's really. I actually kind of like that it's close. I know Elmwood is a little bit off the yeah. beaten path now, but right. all, it's kind of our cluster Everything of schools the, yep. that are kind of there. So I think that's that's also kind of a neat thing because I know Celia and Fiona still would go over back to Hopkins mm -hmm. to work with kids in the classroom. Yep. So I think it's kind of nice that... Tutoring. Yeah, tutoring. Yeah. The, and, and the problem, though, is going to be traffic. Yeah. If everyone's moving that. through there, yeah. except the people going to Elmwood. Yeah. And today, for example, there was an accident on 495. Every single road, yeah. every road it's already was bad tangled up because Waze was sending people... Oh, through oh, Hopkinton. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There were just, I couldn't believe the traffic that I was seeing. It's always bad. It was crazy. <laughs> I mean, so, it's that I, whole area, it was and there's worse. really no way to get around it. Right. There's only a couple right. ways to kind of yep. get to there. So, so Joe Markey, mm -hmm. who is the elementary school building committee chairman, nice. thank you, Joe, did a great job, yep. um, commented at the, at the opening, said that those special touches were, quote, essential reminders that public education has a community context. Yes. Public education can be an extension of and fabric of our communities. And then he read a quote from the Greek philosopher Diogenes, which is also written on the dedication plaque. I love all the meaningfulness to this. That's awesome. Mark explained that children are the keystone of tomorrow's future, Aww. which actually relates back to our previous discussion. Right, right. Traumatized right. children. <laughs> the foundation of every state is the education of its youth. Marky said, in that regard, my true hope is that the legacy of this school for the students that begin their journey here would be the connection that they gain from their community. Yeah. So I love that. They did, they had some selectmen there. Carolyn Dykema is there, Representative Carolyn Dykema, State and Senator Karen, Karen Spilka, Spilka. Yeah. Selectman Brendan Tedstone, and they had the Council General of Greece. Oh, no kidding. Who is in Boston. You know, At the, the time. In Boston. Yep, Stratos. Uh, Eftimiu. <laughs> I think I got that pretty close. That's awesome. Eftimiu. So yeah, it's a, it, so it's not only a great building, but right. it's got a great philosophy right, right from the beginning. Right. And I know Lauren Dubow is a fabulous principal. Yeah. So, oh, oh yeah. she's great. Awesome. She's great. So, and I'm pretty sure that she had a big hand in some of the design. Yeah. Because she really, as I have observed her, yeah, she was coming over to send to uh, Elmwood all the time because the preschool kids were there. So she was was the, oh. she was still principal of the preschool oh. even though they were on the Elmwood site gotcha. so she would come over and I could see her you know exhibiting great love for the students but also great concern and great um, ability to organize and plan yeah. you know so I, I totally believe that she had a lot of say in oh the flow is the traffic is great. flow and yeah. the planning and the yeah. way the rooms are laid out well you think they how much time is spent there and how, yeah. you know, like how flow it affects just really, you know, your whole day. Right. <laughs> you know? And they actually, there is, I think there is a path that goes down to EMC Park. Yes. I'm not sure how they're going to access EMC Park during the day. Right. I'm pretty sure recess would be at, on site at it the It is, yeah. They have a pretty good space. Uh, they have a playground to the side and then in the back, but right. it would be nice if they could connect. Maybe with the you know, maybe they'll take a gym class over there for that to do skateboarding right. classes or something. Right, like that. right. So if you guys have been there, if you want to give us some comments about your favorite thing about Marathon School, uh, we would love to hear your comments either on Facebook, yep. um, live at hcam.tv, or um, you know, give us a call. We have a phone system here. I'll just answer the phone. Hello. <laughs> so yeah, give us a call. Let us know what you think. Um, we think it's terrific, and yeah. it's going to be a great asset to the community. Right, and it's very modern. I mean, that I, I mean, I thought Center School was really cool when Celia went there because I love old buildings. But right. it's, it's very there's something to be said about modern classrooms. Absolutely. Like I'm excited well, that Celia is moving from the middle school to the high school now yes. because the high school is very modern and yes. very, 
and I loved Hopkins. You know what I mean? There is something to be said. Absolutely. You know, well, just thinking about this recent Friday, which was supposed to be, what well, was it, Monday, 100 heat index yes. and they talked about schools lowell yeah closing. some schools had to close because of their yeah. inefficient heating yeah. system cooling i mean cooling system, system. yeah so well middle school we had the yeah. promotion ceremony in the high school field house mm -hmm. and all, i mean just the thought of having it in the middle school <laughs> exactly auditorium was like we exactly. would have been dying you right know. and I am sure that they would have had trouble at center school if it got up to that 100 degree mark. They could not have had people on that third floor. Right. It would have been impossible. Right. It's hard on a, on a regular summer day exactly. there. Exactly. I mean, you know, late uh, late school year, June right. time. So I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that we have this. I know it was a big expense and a yep. little bit of a tax hit. Yeah, that but, was a uh, But it definitely was time. And it I, was. And I know that, that the center school uh, repurposing committee is working really hard yeah. on trying to get some really good use in that space. What did you, I know it's a little off topic. Yeah, that's what, okay. Yeah, what was. Um, um, I'm extremely excited about the possibility and the, the, one of the main things they're going to do, about five main things that they're talking about yep. that came through on the surveys. Yeah. Youth. Uh, youth center oh, slash youth that. services slash parks and rec you know space so so activity awesome. space in the back where the gym is and yeah. some of those offices youth services being in that space oh that's perfect and and then the you know youth center being there pool tables basketball court whatever they awesome. have because the kids go to the common anyway just oh they're feed always them there right yeah. there middle school they're right. always down there yeah. then they talked about some town offices instead of having the school department at Oh, the, 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 the White street. House, which they rent, yeah. they're paying money to have them there. Oh, they should have House them. them in the older section. Oh, you that's know, a great refurbish use. Refurbish it. Yeah. And then um, they need to to store some of uh, papers. Sure. You know, they'll have a lot of paperwork from town hall. Yeah. So some of the town offices. They also, was very exciting, Carol Cavanaugh, um, school superintendent, talked about the um, life skills uh, program, which is for ages 18 to 22. Oh. And they could... Um, they could function out of some of the space in the is center that school like building. A Botech, or it's is it... kind of well. It's really more taking uh, people who have graduated high school but need to learn some of the things about how do you live on your own. Oh, check. How do you live on your like, own? Yeah. Right, and so maybe some education, maybe some Ooh, tutoring, but cool. just fabulous things yeah, like yeah. that. Um, that's I know a I'm great forgetting one thing. Repurposing. Absolutely. So you know the the, the marathon school building itself is going to be a great right. facility for our for our little guys. Yeah. And then using that space and not and knocking down that historical, yeah, gorgeous a, old building yeah, awesome. with the center school and, and using it for the reasons that we need to. And the location is awesome. Location is perfect. The location that is kind of our center. It is the center. That's our that's our town center, and everybody goes down there, and the commons really come along nicely in the last yeah. ten years and it's it's a perfect place right to have all that but that it's it's uh, even though we're seeing growing pains in Hopkinton it's kind of nice to see these positive changes coming right down the and pipe. having some tradition stay yes. along with some of the new things yeah so yeah it's interesting all right well that's our second segment and we'll be back to talk about the Hopkinton Carnival, which is coming June 22nd, 23rd, yeah. I think, something like that. Yeah, I 21st, think it starts tomorrow. 21, 22, 22. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. And um, <laughs> put on by the HPTA. So we'll see you back in a couple minutes to talk about that. Excellent. Yeah. This week on All About Hopkins, Rihanna sits down with Fire Fire Paramedics Tim Healy and Tom Florian as they talk about Hopkinton Fire Department. Typically, I have it at the entrance to the work driveway. Sometimes we will only have one mailbox on the other side of the road, which can make it more challenging. I think they should put a number on their side of the road so we can find them easier. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose, and how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? 
Well, everybody should have it, to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Huh? Yeah. And, <laughs> and we're back. Or welcome back, whichever works for you. Yeah. So, <laughs> So we're going to talk about the Hopkinton Carnival. School ended today in Hopkinton. Yeah. Some of the um, high school students uh, actually were done early in the week, depending on what their final schedule was. Yeah. But today was the last day at Elmwood School, I know, and, and the an, teachers and blew the school. bubbles and uh, waved goodbye to the uh, school buses. It's so cute. And some of the, honestly, at the meeting of the Eagles today, which is our last big I love meeting. Those. I miss those. It was it was really fun, but I could see some of the kids were there were some kids who were teary. Aww. Yeah, they really were and Celia and loved Elmwood. I mean Elmwood was so nice, but in middle school we like had the eighth grade promotion ceremony, but yes. it was you know, like it was it, It's bittersweet. I'm really yeah. I mean say bittersweet it's it's sad you know but i mean you the teachers was, yeah the teach, i, I actually stepmom works at the middle school and she's like oh i'm gonna miss right you know like every year exactly and you have that too right. you lose your right well i used to cry when i i used to cry every time <laughs> Did you? but and then, <laughs> I then i realized that that, that there it, it's so funny because sometimes i get mixed up of kids names because there are kids who look a lot like another kid and siblings. they have a similar personality oh no right. they're not even a sibling it's just a similar personality right, right. so i realize i'm just going to keep having <laughs> right. these similar kids um so yeah so the, we finished we blew the bubbles but then there was one there was one whole bus of kids who were chanting freedom 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 i'm serious it was, yes it was hilarious <laughs> So there's a mix That's, of, we don't want to leave school, we were in school, so nice. and then, yes, let's yes, go. Yes, summer time. So speaking yeah. of which, the carnival <laughs> yes. is a great thing to have. Right on after the, school. Right after school tomorrow. June 21st, yeah. Yep, tomorrow and for the next um, it couple of days. It goes to the 24th, yep. Yep. 21, 22, 23, And apparently 24. it makes um, the Hopkins Parent Teacher Association, last year they made $12,000 from yep. which is great. And yeah. I saw flyers in the bank it was it's $25 for unlimited rides right so you don't have to buy the tickets right. and all that stuff but yeah. I love roller coasters and you know like I, I was looking trying to find the roller coasters and I was looking at when we were at the promotion ceremony the other are day. they up already yeah yeah oh, they were in the parking even... lot when we went into yeah. the promotion ceremony because yep. it said they started setting up on the 17th mm -hmm. but there's like some big coasters there's right. like there's some stuff that looks like it'd be fun but then also stuff for little kids right but i mean remember when i was a kid like we had the state fair but it was so much fun because like everybody's excited to be out of school and it's like a carnival i mean who and they show like their best pig and their best pie and yeah 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 <laughs> right and their horse and yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. we don't have that here no. but they get the rides and, right. and all the like vendors like yep. fried dough and yep cotton and the, candy and throw the yeah. Arts or whatever. Yeah, they um, apparently there were no problems last year at all for police and fire, which yep. is awesome. Yeah, and this is uh, Fiesta good... Shows, yep. which runs it. And they had a picture on um, yeah, the looking... June 8th crier yeah. of the fireball. Yeah, that looks which... like is a sh yeah that yeah, one that's circle. the one i was looking at that right. looked like it would be a lot of fun right <laughs> so. yeah so do you have a, i think i think this is going to sound kind of lame but i love the teacups do you i do because you have to you make it right, go yourself right, right. and you're like oh, you know right. nobody it. likes and, me on the teacups because i get it going of so course, fast it's so yeah. fun <laughs> and then uh, and then i love bumper cars me too because it's you know it's fun. how many times can you run into someone right. and you're supposed to do that right right so it's and it's fun with the, your family and stuff like exactly that. So you're like, and you're Whoa. looking at each other too right. and right. everything else you're you're next to each other terrified you're right like, yeah. yeah yeah but this you're actually looking at each right. other and right. working together or and it's um, nostalgic i mean yeah. for the parents because a lot of those rides because you go to six flags and it's all these like fancy rides they still have some of the little rides yeah but you know, like it, it's something about having it in your hometown. Yes. Because you know everybody there. Right. You know what I mean? Like you're seeing friends, and right. you know teenagers are walking around together, and middle schoolers are walking right. around together, and families are there, yeah. and you know that it's something really nice about having a hometown thing. And I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. It feels safe, and and you have you know every, you you know a lot of people you walk yeah. around. Yeah. It's not we um. We're going to the Topsfield Fair every year oh, yeah, yeah. for a while, and I, and they have all the rides, and they have. But you really don't know anybody who's going along there. You have no right. idea. They're just walking around, and right. they're um, 
there, you know, <laughs> it's a lot of noise. And there's music. There was some and noise yeah. right yeah. there. <laughs> and you have the midway and all the crazy people yeah. and, you know, hawking and trying to get you to, you know. Right. Spend money on my game and right. whatever else. And, right. uh, yeah. It's fun. No, yeah. but I, I like the idea that you see all your friends. And I think, you know, like that, that bittersweet thing that you talk about when the kids leave, yeah. that's an opportunity for everybody to go down there and, and see their friends before right. summer it's vacation. It's a nice segue. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it's a great cause. I mean, the Parent Teacher Association is huge. So, right. you know, that that's a really, it's not like they're just going to any carnival and spending right. money. It's, yeah. it's actually for a benefit. Yep. So. so they're making money, but they're having a good time. Yep. Yep. I guess, should we talk about there yes. was a little bit um, yep. of neighbors mm -hmm. that weren't too happy about it and yes. you know do you want to I it? what I have is um there's a Hayden Row resident who opposed it yeah because of the setup time the noise the traffic and tear down so this is right across the street from him yeah if they start on the 20 on the 17th, 17th. and they tear down on the 14 24th that's a week right of noise and right. distraction and I and understand he's like, thank god school's done and then this I comes understand <laughs> right well he did choose to live there yeah um, but it says it's a 10-day inconvenience and terrible for neighbors it's zoned residential it's not zoned commercial um, wasn't sure it's worth the 12000 He feels like it's a commercial venture, and his quote is lazy fundraising. Aww. But, but, it, I mean, honestly, it's so fun. The kids have such a great yeah. time. It's, so it's 10 days. Yeah. So then the EJ Dean of Fiesta shows. See, I would just be walking across the street every day and riding. Exactly. <laughs> I'd be like, have fun. this is awesome. Have yeah. fun. <laughs> so here, EJ Dean says some of the larger and louder rides, such as Freak Out, <laughs> will be moved toward the back of the school property. There's a good idea, good compromise. Right. It is, if it's too loud across the street right. from someone's home, I agree. Move it down back if people know where to find it. Right. Um, and they're going to work to find a location where employees can smoke cigarettes without disturbing neighbors. Good. Because that is that gross. That would bug me, too. That's really gross. Yeah, that would bug me, too. Um, yep. And then Chamberlain Road resident Gary Trendell spoke in favor of the carnival. Yeah. So he's he's, he's in a butter. He's behind it. Yep, yeah. He's on the side. My kids look forward to it. They've been asking about it. Graziano said... said to be able to walk down there. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, to... like, if Celia was right there. that age and she could walk down there, she'd yep. be, like, back and forth with it's her amazing. friends. It's and... amazing. So Graziano said the organization looked at other locations, but nothing seem to work out yeah it's, perfect um, it's becoming more challenging for them to meet the goal the fundraising goals yeah you know so this was they got over the hundred thousand mark and provided extra funding to the schools yeah. and we know that the school budget is really tight, tight. I and mean, this year was tricky and we have an amazing school district exactly i mean like there there is that money is so well spent i'm watching my daughter and that graduating class from yeah. middle school and what they're learning and right i mean and you know this because you're sure. a teacher you like it's it's amazing what our school has to offer right and i have my family here from idaho oh wow and and they're visiting and and the difference between what we have here and what they have there i mean the yeah. work that these people right. do at the i mean right. that's that's huge i mean every, it is huge i mean it, get, it benefits all of us yep you know it really benefits so the other thing the other comment that aaron graziano um said is that it isn't just about fundraising but an opportunity to bring the community together yeah. so like you said everyone's there yeah They're, you know it's it's a range this is not just a little kid thing right this is a high Big school thing this is adults and, yeah. right you can go do this with your children as a wonderful end of yeah. school year activity Yep. Selectman Claire Wright said the event needs to be evaluated for future years if it continues. You know, say so they are going to pay attention to. Sure, and is that's this their job? Because yeah. you do want to be respectful. Yeah. To the to the abutters and to the neighbors. Yeah. Um. So it's really a balancing weighing thing. Yeah. You know how much is what's the value to the community in terms yeah. of because if you think about the cell you know with this fireworks in the three hundred yeah that was hugely yeah was. Uh, appreciated by right. the community right so if it's ten days. Right. You know, for every, I don't know, but if they I know mean, it's coming, they can make. I, I think about as a kid, and as I talk about State Fair, yeah. I used to just wait for that right. State Fair. Right. And that's one of my best memories right. growing up in school. And I exactly. lived in the town where the State Fair was. Right. So, like, to me, that, like, the whole year revolved around the State Fair. And I know this is not like that, but I think for kids, this yeah. is something for them to look forward to exactly. at the end of the year. And as they grow up, and it becomes a tradition. And, right. And then if they move back here with their families, they're like, oh, we'll have 
have a carnival. How fun is it having a carnival? Granted, I'm a roller coaster lover and carnival lover and all that, but you know, I think it's just and it's a very it's community. a celebration. It really is. And we didn't didn't they have they used to have a carnival in that Kmart Plaza before in Milford. Right. And then I think it's been at Fino Field in Milford. Oh, so right. there have been nearby carnivals. Right. Um and Fino Field, granted, is across from a cemetery, so it's probably not waking anybody up right, right. there. Right, you know, the neighbors so, aren't complaining. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> so, you know, I totally understand and respect um, the situation right. where you want to go to sleep and you're hearing whatever, I, and and smelling I, cigarettes, that's, that's bad. Right, and I'm so, a little snarky about that because, like, I travel a lot. I just buy earplugs. Oh! <laughs> so, oh. so, not to... That's no, I, a good idea. Yeah, because, like, I mean, no, I, I travel a lot for business, and sometimes I've been, I travel in cities, and sometimes I'm by a hospital and there's ambulances going by. You get little foam earplugs, they're like $2. How do you for, hear your alarm to wake up? Oh, you can vibrate. I, I mean, okay. I don't use an alarm, so, like, that's a different but thing. But I'm just saying, someone yeah. who might want. Right. You could, yeah, you could set up there, some alarm, your phone can flash a light, or, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure they can shake the bed. Figure yeah, out yeah, something. yeah, something. <laughs> but yeah, and you can give calls, you know, at a hotel usually. So you know, but I think you know the earplugs thing, and I understand that they do, and the cigarettes I wouldn't like very much either. No, I hate that. But um, but that's that's so very it sounds manageable. like they're trying to be right. It sounds like they're trying to be respectful and, that's, and that's adapt. Good. I mean, they, to to try to understand the concerns of the neighbors yep. and make it so that they can have both. So right. big, you know, the noisy ride yeah is down the back yeah, and the cigarette or somewhere else yeah I think that's appropriate that's a perfect you know? yeah that's a perfect you know what I saw I think it was at the Topsville there they had a smoking tent Ooh. <laughs> which yeah. I thought was kind of funny and yeah. they have it in airports in Europe they have like air smoking rooms but tent but sounds flammable to me well it was a big tent yeah and they had the tent and they had a special um was it it might have been a main. sand pit did they put them in the middle of a sand pit so they <laughs> <laughs> no, but they had the tent going, and then they had like a funneling system oh, okay. that blew all the smoke so up, up, up instead of sideways. So, but I thought that That's, was so clever. Well, you know what? They should invent that. Although yeah. I did hear that fewer people are smoking. Yeah. So that I heard that. That's encouraging, too, which is yeah. really good. But so, yeah. do you have a favorite? I mean, of all the roller coasters. Well, I mean, the, the fireball places, looked to me like right? the best because I was, of course, I was eyeballing. But that's not a roller coaster. That's just a circle. Yeah. Right. But that's still fun. Anything okay. that goes upside down or right. spins or okay. you know. Do you like the one that yeah. goes like this? I like the one and I don't know if they have this one but I like the one that you you're you, in the cage you, you stand against the wall right and it goes centrifugal force holds right. you against the wall right. and the feet drop down and right. so you're like glued to the wall and you're right. like Right, right. You know, that one's fun. And, and then I, they take the picture at the certain point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh, I look yeah. like that. If I like anything that spins or, yeah, like is up or, I like it all. Yeah. I mean, the bumper so nothing, cars are fun. Yeah. Well, I mean, probably the fireball that would be the one I like the most because I like stuff that goes. No, but, well, but so I'm thinking of my kids. Yeah. If, if when I think of what they love, I mean, for me, I think Space Mountain. At oh, Disney was yeah, my it goes favorite because in and out. Yeah. it was it would you kind of ratchet you up. Yeah, yeah, the old you could hear ratchet, coaster, ratchet up, yeah. and then you do this thing. And what I, my least favorite was the um, oh rides in general. I have my rides, rides in there. general. So oh, my least favorite was the Aerosmith ride, again at Disney. I think it was Universal because <laughs> it went from zero to a hundred miles an hour oh, I'd love in that. the dark. With little black flashy lights playing this Aerosmith, Very I don't even remember 80s. what the sound yeah. was because I just was terrified. I mean, my, all my whole body said, "You're gonna die now." You oh, die. No. It was just you know See, hurtling, I, I hurtling into the darkness. So that was my least favorite, and um, I don't bumper cars are my most favorite. That's well, no, nice. I know I like Space Mountain. So Six Flags, I love. So yeah, Superman, so which, I love. Right, that's what I, I love. Cyclone, my kids love I like Goliath. I like um, Batman. Like, I, I don't know. And then I like the one the, that's like in Zombie Land that goes up and then drops you down. Yeah, and the I like drops. the old rickety road. I like them all. Yeah, the, they're the, um, what's that? Thunder Mountain Railroad yeah. at, uh, and Disney. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So John has a good question. Thank you for your question, John. John says, are there any concerns about the safety of these rides? And we do know that in Daytona Beach, yeah. whatever road that ride that was, the, the cars went off the edge right. and two people got, you know, I think they, I don't know if they were killed or injured. Yeah. Or, I mean, there is a risk and for someone who loves roller coasters, you, you know, that there's a risk. 
But like you, it looks like they've hired a very reputable. Fiesta shows are all over the place. They do all the fairgrounds. You know what I mean? And they inspect right. the equipment. You know. Yeah, and I know. And that- I mean, there is a risk. But I mean, right. and and I'm gonna be snarky for a moment, but like that's true. Dri- that's twice. Yeah. I'm, oh yeah. <laughs> so, but driving a car is a risk. Riding a horse is yeah, a risk. Yeah, um, riding yeah. your mountain bike is a risk. Um, you know, snowboarding's a risk. I mean, and I think this stuff is like inspected all the time, and they look at it. And although. I yeah. have to say, so the, the Daytona Beach one yep. um, had been inspected. There was yeah. something that wasn't something working. Fails. It'll fail. And, yeah. appa- you know, they apparently didn't fix it. Yeah. So. Ah, uh, see, that's, yeah. Or they didn't fix it well enough. Right. And that, to me, I think those are the cases that, sure. you know, as John's question raises, how do you know? Right. And I would assume that um, our HPTA right. would be checking all the right. the boxes. Well, and Hopkinton's and very yeah. exactly. So I I feel that right. the people on they on didn't just go with the lowest the bidder. HPTA yeah. would che- would make sure that they had right. safety records right. and 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 verify. I'm and, sure we could Google that and find out how many. You know how many accidents happen with for Fiesta that particular show. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I think that, I mean, and I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. If you can't tell, so like I'm like whatever. You know, like if I go flying out. Yeah, no, 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 that's not me. Yeah, yeah. So, no. I wanna. I'm more of a safety. I'm like safety and protection at school. You know, the kids. <laughs> I just I got whacked on the arm because they're like you know they I just oh, always saying could you please be careful and yeah you know your shoelaces untied that's me so so the thing is I would feel I would feel comfortable because I would trust that right the HPTA would have done that right. homework and then if they you're have comfortable kids. research the company you right. know we know it's Fiesta shows do the research but even still I mean yeah. really those that's an accident yeah so accidents happen yep. and it's not you could do as much research as you want but if there's a missing bolt yep. or loose no one is something so and someone who loves statistics that's, yes I love statistics yes. I would look at statistics so if that worried me I would kind of look at statistics and say, well, how many, so there's how many thousands of carnivals set up every year? How many accidents are there? And then how many people ride it? So that, for me, that would kind of help me. But I'm, I'm saying you that would you be, don't know right. which, which ride it is going to be on which day, whatever the statistics are. So you can't live that way. You can't be like, it's probably my car that's no, going to go off the edge. I don't like that so you should just, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I would trust that... The HPT had done their homework. Yep. That Fiesta shows is a reputable company. Yep. Um, that there are police, fire, very responsive. Oh yeah. People in our community. And we're close to, to two help, hospitals. Close to two <laughs> hospitals. You know, so I would, I would, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thought might be in my head somewhere, but I think in this case, yep. I would feel pretty comfortable. Well, and I yeah. say get out there, enjoy it, um, and yeah. have fun with your family, and right. make this it's a, a great tradition. end to the great, great end to the school year. Yep. And, and uh, we hope you have a great summer. We'll see it. Well, no, a great week because we'll yeah. see you next week. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Did it on time.